We have a confession to make. When we first lived in Toronto almost 10 years ago, we had an experience that a lot of other people in the city can relate to, which is coming across a construction site and thinking, oh great, yet another condo tower going up. It's just an easy reaction to have when the city around you is changing in such visible ways. So when these developers are building these monstrosities in terms of a uh, huge uh, condominium complexes. But there's one really important fact that this knee-jerk aesthetic response didn't fully consider at the time. People actually live in these so-called monstrosities. A lot of people. This block is home to 2,000 people. This one, 4,000, and a grocery store. Across Greater Toronto, 1.3 million people call mid-rise and high-rise housing home. We have major disagreements with Toronto housing policy. Why is it so much easier to build new housing near a noisy and polluted highway than in established neighborhoods with declining populations? But we can't lose sight of the fact that these tall buildings that everyone loves to hate are people's homes. They provide an enormous amount of value just based on that fact alone. As we covered in a previous video, our relationship with building height is nuanced. On one hand, we love ground-oriented density, the townhouses, multiplexes, and walk-up apartments that provide the often forgotten middle ground between low-density and high-density living. At the same time, some fans of this type of housing often fall into an unfortunate snobbery about taller housing. They treat height as a blight on a city and inherently bad for quality of life, and very often they don't want to allow the construction of these taller buildings. We think this is wildly out of proportion, and blind to the very real damage you cause to affordability and livability by arbitrarily blocking new housing that's economically viable and in demand. What we didn't adequately cover in that previous video is that taller buildings actually do have livability benefits outside of just providing housing supply. The first livability benefit of taller buildings is accessibility. Urbanists often praise short buildings for not needing an elevator, which they see as a win for convenience and low construction costs. But many people have reduced mobility because of age or disability, and taking stairs to a walk-up apartment just isn't going to work for them. If you're in a wheelchair, it's even worse. Townhouses, multiplexes, and walk-up apartments commonly aren't even wheelchair accessible on the first floor. On the other hand, mid-rise and especially high-rise buildings almost universally have ramps and elevators to access any unit of the building. You don't even have to have a disability to benefit. As much as we loved our Montreal walk-up apartment, Having to move our furniture up multiple flights of stairs was kind of a nightmare. Carrying up a full-size bike was a hassle, too. And it's partly why we bought folding bikes. Views. Not just a metric that YouTubers obsess over. They're also a sought-after feature in housing. Shorter buildings can have good views, too, especially if there's a natural feature like a mountain or river to look at. But taller buildings provide views of the city or surrounding landscape that shorter buildings usually can't and they provide these views to a much larger number of people. In Ottawa, we don't have much of a view, and it is actually something we miss. Being able to look out your window and have an expansive vista on the city is a real quality of life benefit. Views are usually cited as the reason for the floor premium, where units in a taller building tend to sell for a bit more as you go higher, suggesting that people care quite a lot about views. Living higher up is good for safety, privacy, and street noise. Not everyone wants the connection to street life that urbanists often praise. Recently, we had a wannabe bike thief rummaging around in our backyard, and it wasn't the most pleasant thing in the world. It made us more careful about locking our door and leaving things outside. If we lived higher up, we wouldn't have the same concerns. Our outdoor belongings would be on a balcony, too high to be accessible from the ground, and we'd probably have a secured entrance in between us and the street. Many buildings have front desk attendants or security guards watching who comes and goes. Critics call it socially isolating to have these barriers between you and the street. But livability is all about balancing public and private space. If you live in a denser city, you almost definitely spend time at parks and other public spaces. Is it really so wrong if your balcony is your own private haven far from the ground? Apartments even create their own opportunities for interaction. In our Toronto high-rise, we met and chatted with lots of other residents in the lobby and the elevator. It helped that many of them were retired and chatty, but we just don't believe that tall buildings are inherently isolating. Quality shared spaces like community gardens and courtyards can add to that. Bigger residential buildings, including mid-rise but especially high-rise, are a lot more likely to have amenities like pools and gyms compared to smaller scale density. We considered a nine-story building in Ottawa, and while we didn't pick it, the pool was a serious advantage that tempted us. 
The gym would have tempted us too if more apartment buildings had real gyms, with barbells and squat racks. That one was for you, Clarence. Other amenities include guest suites, party rooms, concierge, garbage chutes, and occasionally things like tennis courts. Noise from other units is one of the main concerns we hear from people about denser living. Taller buildings are usually made out of concrete, which tends to be better for noise insulation than the wood frame structures usually used for shorter buildings. Tall buildings aren't for everyone, but they do have livability advantages beyond just providing housing supply. To learn more about how people prioritize these factors, we conducted a short survey using an online research platform, asking people to pick their top priority for an apartment or condo from six options. Three were advantages typically associated with taller buildings, views, amenities, and accessibility, and three were typically associated with shorter buildings. Easy ground access through stairs, the ability to know most people in your building, and connection with street life. The result was clear. Views and amenities, advantages usually found in taller buildings, came out on top. These puns write themselves. We enjoy smaller apartment buildings quite a bit ourselves, and we're actually surprised at how few people picked features like quick access to the ground by stairs. When we asked participants to assume that they were going to live in a 30 story building and they could pick any floor, There was an interesting pattern. The very lowest and very highest sections of the building were by far the most popular, although the lower middle was more popular than the upper middle. When we hear people claim that something along the lines of five stories is the quote-unquote optimal building height, that only captures about a third of people's preferences in our survey. Going to ten stories only captures about half. And this doesn't even get to people who'd prefer the fourth floor, but would accept living on floor 16 if it meant a shorter commute to work which taller buildings can in theory provide, but maximizing use of space in the high-demand central city. Our closing thought is that we wish people were better at separating their housing preferences from their housing policy. You don't have to want to live in a tall building yourself to believe that other people should have the option. And who knows, you might even find yourself living in a taller building someday, just maybe on a lower floor. Thanks for watching through to the end of the video. Don't forget to not miss the forest for the towers, and subscribe! A special thanks to our supporters on Patreon, and all the people who contribute pictures from their high-rise views 